This is Sovarshila working as an associate professor in the Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. We have been discussing about database management system from quite a long number of sessions. And we discussed the theoretical part of the database management system in previous lectures. In this session, I would like to discuss about implementation of the database using SQL. So we'll discuss the basic commands of SQL in the current session as well as coming few sessions so that whatever the information we got through our theoretical lectures can be used to implement our database physically in a computer system. So in this session, SQL DDL statements are going to be discussed. Initially, I'll discuss how physical database design is going to be considered by using SDLC concepts. Then what are the various uh, developments in a SQL language? And part of the SQL language, DDL statements will be discussed with some examples. The physical design stages of database management system by using SDLC concept, software development lifecycle. So the purpose of the programming, testing, training, installation, documentation, product deliverability, operational programs, documentation, training material, and what are the programs we are going to use? What are the data structures we will use? Everything will become under these various steps of database design, database implementation of any real-time application using SDLC. So the, now the physical database design and the database implementation are our major criteria. Previous lectures, we discussed our various steps in designing our database. As a part of that, we already designed what is the requirement analysis as well as what are the logical database design we discussed by using various uh, techniques, conceptual modeling, logical design also completed. So now we are into the physical database implementation. So in SDLC project identification and we have to select and the second step is the project initialization and planning to implement the project, analysis, logical design, then physical design, implementation, maintenance. The first four steps have been discussed in previous lectures as a part of our theoretical database management system. Now we are into the phase of physical design and also as well as the implementation. To implement any database, we need some standard language. We discussed initially about various relational languages. And we discussed about some of the pure relational languages as well as commercial relational languages are there. Under pure, we discussed about relational algebra and relational characters. Under commercial, now we are going to discuss about the structured query language. We need a standard. Many languages were introduced, but the standardization of the relational language is more required. Because of the standardization of the language, it reduces the training costs, productivity increases, application portability will be there, and applications are going to be long witty and reduced dependence on a single vendor. Cross system communication is also possible. Because of that, various developments have been there in commercial database software, still they are being on as per the innovations are introduced in both hardware as well as the softwares. So one of the 
popular query language is SQL. SQL stands for Structured Query Language. It is used to make requests retrieve the data from the database. The term itself indicates query. Query means retrieving. So, this SQL is used to mainly to retrieve the data from our database as per the need of a user. But remember, this is not a simple query language. It consists of all features of the relational languages. That is, it consists of the DDL commands and it consists of the DML statements, as well as implementation of the transaction processing, implementation of the security commands are available. And it is rich of entire database implementation commands are there in SQL. That's why it's very popular as well as even now, it has been started developing in 1970s onwards. Even today, it is used in most of the real-time applications. And the continuous developments are there, improvisation is there. The DBMS process, the SQL request, and retrieves the request data from the database and returns to the user. This process of requesting data from database and retrieving the, uh, receiving the Results back is called database query and hence the name structured query language is given to us. That language, relational language. SQL is a language that all commercial relational database management system implementations understand. Oracle is majorly. SQL is a non-procedural language. We'll discuss about the procedural language as a PLSQL further. And also it is based upon the relational algebra. So that's why SQL is a commercialized language based on relational algebra and which is a non-processional language. And we discussed these things in the session of relational languages. We'll be discussing SQL with respect to the Oracle syntax, but SQL is as SQL server is there, MySQL is there, variations are there. But almost to syntax may be different as per the respective compilers, but logic almost will be the same actually. We cannot write program by using this SQL directly, but we can use some programming language can be used to integrating with SQL so that programs can be embedded. SQL statements will be there in the any programming language. This is the way how SQL queries are going to be executed and user will, SQL request will be made by the user to the database management system. In turn, database management system interact with your database and retrace the data, get back the data, the same data is going to be again displayed to the user group. So this database management system is the software resided in our system and the database is going to be stored as we discussed in previous uh, various sessions. Database is stored in the non-volatile storage devices from which the data is going to be accessed through this database management system software. This SQL has uh, introduced by Oracle Corporation first in a commercial, as a commercial re relational database management system in 1979. Then it was standardized, standardized by ANSI, American National Standard Institute and SQL Standards Committee. In 1983, IBM announces DB2. This is also one of the query language, relational database query language. Even still, most of the IBM machines are working on DB2. And 1986, ANSI, the first standard scale one was approved by the ANSI. In 1987, ISO, scale one standard is approved by the ISO. In 1992, ANSI improvised the SQL as SQL2 standard is approved. In 2000, Microsoft Corporation SQL Server aimed at enterprise applications. In 2004, SQL 2003 standard was published. Afterwards also, depending upon the respective database, relational database management system supports based upon the supporting of the relational database management system, 
SQL new versions have been introduced. Standard versions have been introduced and published in 2006, 8, 11, and recently 16. Maybe further improvised versions will be there. In SQL environment, as we discussed relational database management system, we have our table as well as we have our, I mean, relation, attributes, rows, columns, etc. are represented tuples. Similarly, in SQL environment, we will use these words, catalog, schema, data definition language, commands, data manipulation language, commands, data control language, commands, data transport. Transaction processing commands also. Catalog means a set of schemas that constitute the description of the database. It is just like our data dictionary. It will give the description of the schemas which are being created in our system. Software. Schema is the structure that contains descriptions of the objects created by the user. Schema consists of collection of objects created by users such as objects means tables, views, constraints, etc. Indices, etc. To do all this process, we need some languages, no? So that's why we need some commands. Those are DDLs, DML and DCL commands. DDL commands are used to, already we decide, to define our database, to create, alter and drop the tables. Tables or any other objects, schemas, etc. Data manipulation commands are used to, to maintain and query the databases. Data control language is used to, to control our database accessibility by introducing the security restrictions. It is including administrative privileges and committing of the database, etc. Various limits are there. Oracle RDBMS have certain limits based upon the version 10, etc. Maybe it might be increased depending upon the recent versions. And these figures are going on, keeping on changing. There is no restriction on creation of the table under Oracle, no restriction on creation of or adding of a rows for a particular table. Number of columns will be 254. Characters in a character field will be 240. Number field will be 105. Tables joined in a query, there is no limit because no limit for tables, no. So that's why joining of the tables also no limit. As well as characters in a name is, uh, that means when you are defining an attribute, etc. will be 30. This is the environment, how it works. DDL, DML, DCL, uh, how in SQL database development process uh, supports actually. DDL is data definition languages no so it defines the database that means it uh, creates the table indices views etc it also establishes some keys and also relationship among the these objects by using foreign key concept and also it allows us to drop or truncate the table that means it is creating the table no so that's why it is related to our physical design Physical, that means it, it creates indices, it creates how the data has to be stored internally. Everything is going to be specified as per the user need, as per the DBA, database administrator requirement. This is going to be done internally. It will interact with our secondary storage device, storage techniques. So that's why it is related to physical database design. Similarly, it is going to be maintained, not dropping, truncating or there. So that's why it is also comes under the maintenance phase. Once created afterwards also, it has to be continuously, it has to be maintained and manageable by user group through this maintenance phase. So that's why here, that means new tables are added, existing can be dropped out, new constraints are going to be added as per the user, uh, uh, I mean, the need, the there may be many modifications are going to be done by database management system. So maintenance, it will be under maintenance. DML means database manipulation language. Database manipulation language means here we created only structure. DDL is used only to create the object, that's all. 
in that particular object, the data has to be introduced, data can be manipulated, the data can be deleted, all this can be done through these DML commands. And this is known as, uh, considered as the data manipulation will be in the implementation phase. Database is going to be created, but what data has to be added, how the data is to be modified, how the data is used to create some other uh, uh, results. All these things are done by uh, uh, various users of the database uh, and that we will consider it as a during this implementation phase. But we have to maintain integrity as well as the security of our database. So the permissions are not going to be provided to all users. For example, we will consider some uh, a, a common database system, with popular database systems, for example, banking system. We are all using banking system, but all of us cannot access everything from the banking database management system. I can access only my account details. Any other person can access only their account details only. For example, employee may access some data related to various employees, loan information, etc. But I cannot access the information about others. All these are restrictions because they gave permission or granted permission only to access my account by providing some credentials. So similarly here, this data control language is used to, to control the database accessibility to maintain the security and integrity of the database. These are going to be done at the time of implementation as well as at the time of maintenance also. That means who are accessing the data, what at what level they are accessing. Are we are permitting them to update existing one? Are they permitting us banking to update our uh, data for somebody else account? No, they are not permitting. That means I have only based upon my credentials, I can access and I can modify modification also through some transaction only. Explicitly, I cannot modify it, right? So these are all done, that is uh, data control language statements are there by SQL, supported by SQL, which are implemented in both implementation phase as well as the maintenance phase. So as we discussed earlier, SQL commands are DDL, DML and DCL. DDL commands create, alter, drop, truncate. These four commands are used to, to manage, to create our objects. DML commands are used to, to insert and manage the data, access the data from our already created objects. As I told you previously, data control language are used to grant, revoke, commit, rollback. These are the commands used to to maintain our database security as well as the granting of the privileges to various users. So select, insert, update, delete, merge. These are the DML commands. Create, alter, drop, rename, truncate, comment. These are the DDL commands. And grant, revoke are the DCL commands. Sometimes we may use this commit rollback save point also under data control language only, but it is related to basically transaction processing. We have been discussed, we discussed all these transaction based commands in our theoretical transaction processing lectures also. So now we are going to discuss about DDL commands a little bit elaborately. Data definition language, Create command is the major command. The create objects, what are the various objects can be associated with this creator? You can create the schema, we can create table, create view, and many more. You can create character set, you can create a collation and translation, and you can create an assertion domain. New domains are also created by us. User-defined domains are also possible by us. So various objects can be created by using this create statement and different syntax are there for different objects here. And we are going to discuss more detail about the table that is the basic object generally we will use at basic level as well as at any level also. Then 
during one some sessions we'll discuss about the other objects like view assertion etc also schema is uh, it is a collection of uh, this is uh, we will create a schema under which the collection of uh, some other objects will be there that is tables various tables etc it defines the portion of the database owned by a particular user actually table defines set of columns and rows and it defines logical database from already existing one or more existing tables or views a new can be generated to create a table basically basic object we need some columns no columns means attributes attributes means we supposed to define what are the types of the data to be stored in those attributes so various data types supported by our sql are numeric data types character or string data types large object data types boolean data types date data types various data types are supported by our sql under numeric it may be int integer small big int etc it may support float also real double float it will support fixed point numbers as a decimal numeric now similarly for characters also fixed length characters will be there variable length characters are supported by us char character or where char char varying etc all these various uh, types are going to be having some variations based upon the maximum number of characters supported by the respective software large objects of data types are character c log character large objects etc bit type data also can be manageable by our database by using blob binary large object etc that means these are used to when we would like to store the data in terms of pictures etc bits in terms of bits we can consider similarly boolean values true or false are null we'll discuss about a special value null further and date types fixed date type is there and these formats can be changed but it is having a position 10 positions fixed position is there four for year two for month two for date and separator two separators are there so four plus two plus two eight plus two separators 10 of course the changes of uh, uh, formatting may be uh, there and we have built in functions are there to make changes but commonly we will use these uh, data types number char where char to long date so we can use for numeric now you can use either number or integer both can be used integer no need to specify the length automatically it will take 38 columns as 38 columns as our integer for number we can specify the width or how many number of four digits are acceptable so number of four means four digits number of six means six digits but if you are using integer means 38 are allocated so that's why most of the time we will use number along with the how much how many number of bytes are going to be supported similarly character also char is there where char is there the basic difference between these two are character means fixed char of n means n for example i am defining my name as a char of 15 character of 15 means even i am giving only four columns for example g o h and j remaining 11 columns are going to be blank so totally 15 columns are allocated but if it is where char of 15 means 15 are allocated but i am using four means only four can be used the remaining character uh, i mean space is going to be sent back to the os right so these are the character means char in char where char n where char etc are there but we will use most of the time where char to number we will use number of length and if it is float number of p comma s we will give precision and we have to scale and precision p stands for precision and say s is a scale p ranges from 1 to 38 and s ranges from minus 84 to 127 of course variations are there and long and raw data can be there 
date and time time also there time formats are also there large objects are there and row id will be there various forms are there these are all the various data types supported by our sql a special value is used in our databases already we discussed in theoretical concepts also null value same null value is supported by our sql also what is nuli remember our sql is not a case sensitive so that's why you need not worry about that law uh, upper case or a lower case actually as we already know that null value means it may be missing unknown inapplicable unavailable unassigned data represented as a null value so if you don't have value that will be null null is not a data value remember and it is not a blank or it is not a zero so it's just meaning that respective column doesn't have value that's all it's an indicator that the value is unknown to us that's all don't think it is a blank etc if you are providing blank it is not a null blank is also having some ascii code so that's why blank cannot be considered as a null blank is one of the characters and while defining our create command we supposed to introduce constraints we already discussed about various types of constraints theoretically in the lecture integrity constraints of relational database design there we discussed already what is primary key what is candidate key referential integrity constraints etc how these constraints are implemented in our sql actually because the constraints are maintaining or assuring ensuring integrity of the database so that's why how the constraints are defined by sql at the time of creation or modification of the structure of the database the constraints are defined at two levels column level and table level we'll discuss one by one what are the constraints supported by sql SQL supports primary key constraint, unique constraint, foreign key constraint, and the check constraint. Primary key means here it specifies it may be a simple primary key or composite primary key. So primary key can be specified for a single or more attributes which are uniquely identifies our data from our database we already defined what is primary key what is unique etc please i am not at all again repeating these things because i defined already primary key foreign key and candidate key also so primary key means which we would like to select a, a single attribute or collection of attributes which will retrieve our data from our database uniquely and which is used to most frequently to search our database right primary key means it is unique automatically it is not null it is explicit it is it is implicit explicitly we need not specify it is not null so if i am declaring any of the attribute or a collection of attributes primary key means those attributes values should not be null we have to provide the data similarly those uh, attributes data should not be duplicated so these primary key attributes must be declared um, 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 it is not null as well as it is unique another clause is there unique clause unique clause means as we discussed in theory there will be more than one key in our database one of them is primary key other keys are known as candidate keys so for which these keys are also uniquely identifies data from our database but these keys need not be not null this is a alternative keys if you would like to specify alternative keys you can use unique for the respective attribute or set of attributes that means to represent our candidate keys you can use this unique in our sql 
and primary key, foreign key, unique and the check constraints. These are the four. How to create a database? Check constraint is, we will discuss one by one. When we are creating any table, first we suppose to identify what are the attributes must be there in our table. That is first we suppose to identify the columns that must be included on our, in our data. First columns must be identified and also identify the data types of the attributes. I would like to create a table of student. First I suppose to identify what are the attributes must be included in my student table and also what is the data type of each attribute also. Second, we have to identify the columns that can and cannot be null. For example, if I am taking student, student hall ticket number cannot be null. Okay. Similarly, I may define student phone number should not be null because for contacting, I should have a student number mandate. It is assured. All these constraints already we discussed. It is depending upon the Conditions are a need imposed by the user. User means our client. Third one, identify the columns that must be unique. That is candidate keys. Fourth one, identify the columns which is a primary key. Foreign key, relationship. Then identify the default values. I will discuss what is meant by default values. The identify the constraints on columns, domain constraints, check we will use. And we can create the table as well as the index, indices also depending upon our need. So this is the general syntax of the table you observe. The uppercase letters are reserved words, lowercase letters are user defined. This is the notation generally we will follow while defining a syntax in any computer science related areas. So the create table, this table name is our user defined name and we will define the column definitions. What is meant by column definition? Each column will have definition means column name will be there and column constraint will be there. What is meant by column definition? You observe column name will be there and its domain name will be there. Column constraint will be there. Default value is there. By using these, any constraints are there, you can constrain. As we explained previously, constraints can be defined at the level, that is, maybe at the attribute level or maybe at the table level. If it is attribute level, along with the column definition, the constraint is going to be specified. If it table level, the constraints are specified after representing all columns. After defining all columns, the respective tables are, respective constraints are going to be represented. So, how to create a table? For example, if a structure was given to you, first you identify the attributes. What are the data types of each attribute? Identify which of the data attributes are having not null values. Which of them is unique, which of them is primary key, which of them is having some any default value or a constraints are their domain constraints. All these things must be first clearly understood by us. Then only we can create a table. So a simple syntax can be specified like this. Create table, table name, open parenthesis, after completion, closing parenthesis, within the parenthesis, each column definition. After completion of all columns, table constraint definitions. We will give some examples here without implementing not null and primary key. For example, we would like to create a customer table which is having attributes, customer ID, name, three parts of the names are there, last name, mid name and first name, account number, account type and branch name and customer email. These are the attributes. Know this, this customer ID is having a number numeric as well as maximum five columns. Customer ID cannot be a null value. 
Each customer should have an ID. Each customer should have a name. At least last name must be there. First and middle name may not be there, but last name must be there. And account number is a primary key, which is unique at all time. And each customer should have account type. Either it is a savings or current, etc., etc. Or loan account, type of the account. And also branch name must be mandatory. So if you are thinking some of the attributes are mandate means those are not null. For example, customer ID is a mandate and customer name, one of the part of the name that is last name is mandate. At least one name must be there. And also we are assuming that account type must be there and also branch name must be there. We cannot leave blank these four attributes means that means such attributes are defined with a constraint and not null constraint. And the primary of this table, primary key of this table is considered as an account number. So for account number, we are defining a primary key. So these are the two constraints we are defining. So how the constraints are defining here? Not null constraint and primary key. So you observe here, we are giving the attribute name and also data type. This is number of five means data type. It is a numeric data type. Then we are defining the constraint. Constraint defining structure is syntax is the word constraint is used and this is a constraint name and this is the constraint type. Not null is a constraint type. This constraint name is in a optional actually. We, if you want you can give a constraint name or if you don't want you need not give the constraint name. But it is good practice give a constraint name to each constraint. Why I'll discuss when we are using alter table commands. Okay. So that's why. So what is the syntax of each column definition? Column name is there. Column data type is there. Then if any constraints are there, the constraint definition. Constraint definition is the reserve word constraint a user-defined constraint name and constraint type. Not null constraint, no, so that's why. Blue color represented constraint name user-defined. You can use anything. Null 1, null 2, null 3, N1, N2, N3. Primary key means PK. Foreign key means FK1, FK2, FK3, like that. You can use any number, any, any name actually. Attribute name just like that. You observe second one also. Last name also, we defined the constraint as a not null. But remember here, for middle name, no constraints. So only customer name, that is attribute name and data type is there. First name also, attribute name and data type is there. So last one, customer email also, attribute name and data type is there. That means this constraint specification is an optional. If you want, you can use along with the column definition. If you don't want it, you need not use. For example, by mistake, if you are not defined, you would like to use further, you can add, don't worry. Similarly, you defined, but it should not be there further, you can remove it also. That we'll discuss in the alter table command. Hope you understand here. That means once we define this structure, a table is created, will be created with the customer details having these all these attributes in which the customer ID, customer name, last name, as well as account number, account type and bank branch name. These are all having some constraints among them. All are not null. Account number is primary key also. That means it is not null as well as unique also. Similarly, you can create a primary key. How many, what is the attribute I specified here? Only for account number is a primary key here. That means only one attribute I am taking. When we are defining the constraints along with these attributes, these constraints are known as column level constraint. These constraints are known as column level constraints. You observe here, we represented these constraints are associated with each column 
So column level constraints. Okay. But sometimes, as we discussed earlier, key may be a composite key also. In such case, I cannot give primary key along with each attribute because the primary key should come only once in our table. Only one primary key will be there in a table. There may be more unique keys, there may be more null constraints, there may be more foreign keys, but primary key will be only a single primary key. So, if you would like to define it as a composite key, as a primary key, that is primary key is based upon two or more columns, then it will be defined at the end of the definition, we will call it as a table level constraint. We will call it as a table level constraints. So, these table level constraints are going to be represented after defining all columns, just before closing the parentheses. You observe here, we created customer ID with a not null constraint and the last name also not null. These two are don't, don't have any constraints. Account number is also not null and account type is also not null. But here branch name is also not null. What we would like to take because here sometimes joint accounts will be there. More people will have the same account number. So account number cannot be unique certain times. So, what we supposed to do actually? So, if joint accounts etc. are there, multiple users must be maintained uh, same account. In such cases, you can use combination of the uh, users as a primary key. So, what we are using here primary key? Primary key is a, a composite key and we are specifying. What are the composite keys we are specifying? The respective key is going to be represented by Customer ID and account number, composite. So, customer ID and account number was represented here. But remember, it is not constraint related to the email. After email, before closing, we are defining this constraint explicitly. Constraint PKE by 3, this is name of the primary key. We are defining, don't worry about the Names, names are defined just like our attribute names we are defining, you no know, similar to that, some name we are giving, that's all. So, we are defining a primary key for this table as having the combination of customer ID and account number. So, this is the composite key. So, this composite key we are considering it as a primary key. I cannot define a, uh, again, it's either customer ID or account number separately because it separately means individually it will take combination it won't take. Now, this type of constraint is now table level constraints. So, we are considering now table level constraints means, for example, the same constraint have to be represented or imposed on more than one attribute. Generally, we will define that constraint at the end of the definition of the columns. Those are all table level constraints. Another constraint is unique. Unique constraint is used to, to represent our candidate keys. For example, you are having create a table, some unique table is there. E code as a primary key we represented and E name is not null and email is also one of the key I would like to represent but uh, one primary key only no, so that's I am representing it as a unique. Please observe that the difference between a primary key and a unique are at the time of implementation, both are going to be retrieving the data uniquely only. But in case of primary key, it, allow, it doesn't allow the null values. But in case of unique, it allows the doesn't, uh, null values. Another one is foreign key constraint. Already we discussed what is foreign key. Is It is a referential integrity constraint. And it is having a relationship between two tables. Then we can use this referential integrity constraint as a foreign key. If you want to establish a relation, already another table must be already created by us. Then only that can be used as a referential integrity in our current table. Please remember, you observe whenever we are using referential integrity constraint, you can represent it as at the row level or it can represent it as a, at a table level also. Table level means after defining all your 
respective attributes you observe here employee id is a primary key and we are defining our manager id manager id is also a actually employee key only right no manager id who is manager one of the employee only so that's why i am referring that is this employee manager is again referring itself the relationship is here unary you observe here manager id is having a constraint as a foreign key which is referring the table what is this table name employee manager current table itself it may be different table also don't worry about that in that table which name it which attribute is it referring employee id because you cannot give any manager id which is not in your employee id i hope you understand because manager is also an employee you know his details must be there as an employee first and he can be a manager for some more employees so that's why our manager must be an employee so that's why manager id must be one of the employee ids which are already given by us another example is there check constraint this is one of the domain constraint for example some certain cases what happens in our second domains will possess certain range of values only in such cases we can use check constraint for example employee salary must be always greater than 0 and it must be uh, less than almost 10 lakhs not more than that by mistake if anyone is providing the due to updations or due to the insertion of data etc more than this value comes it has to given a caution or an error to them that is it always integrity checking i'll give one more example in case of our banking environment if you are have a have a account the minimum balance must be maintained for example in my bank 500 is minimum balance automatically any withdrawal happens no it will check what is the remaining balance if the remaining balance is more than or equal to 500 then only the transaction is going to be allowed otherwise the transaction won't allow these are the constraints always it has to check in your database whenever database modifications have been made actually so in such cases what happens no so internally you can do two ways we can do it, those constraints are represented in our program and we can check every time but those are common constraints you know why should we write for logic sql provides to check automatically those constraints are represented by check constraint you observe here emp salary constraint chk this is constraint name check check is only a condition check is the reserve word here employee salary must be greater than 0 and emp salary must be less than or equal to 10 lakhs if it is i mean violates the range of the salary then it will give an error to us another example is you can say the for example i may be check uh, let, let us assume that i have only four departments in my college 10 20 30 40 so check department number is equal to 10 or 20 or department number is 20 30 40 more than that if you are giving other than these four values it will give an error to us so check is used to check constraint is used to, to check the domain constraints actually and another uh, command is there another constraint is the default default means for example when we are entering the data some of the attributes will have some default value commonly it will have that only rarely it may change so in such cases we can use default value so that uh, to avoid the repetition of insertion of the same data multiple times for example in our college let us assume that in my college our college is having uh, address as uh, it is at dundigal and telangana state so by default uh, when we are taking mo most of the students are hailing from the same uh, area so that's why the state uh, uh, value will be always telangana only default value will be telangana of course some of the students may be from other states comparatively very less in number no so for those students the value is going to be changeable 
Remember, default means it doesn't mean that the value. By default, it will be taking that value. If you didn't provide, it will take that value. If you are providing any value, it will take the value which was provided by us. Same example here, default city is Mysore only. If you are providing some other city like Hyderabad, Bombay, Delhi, etc., then automatically this Mysore won't be there. If you didn't provide, the value will be taken as it. So by using all these specifications, we can define our database by creating all required tables with the columns, that is attributes and the constraints for your respective attributes also. Possible constraints for the respective attributes also. As we discussed earlier, whenever the constraints are specified, what happens sometimes? The constraints, we may forget to tell, uh, specify the constraint or according to the client needs, the constraints may be added or might be deleted after some time. For example, initially or modifiable. Initially, uh, balance is only 100 or 50 previously. Now it may sometimes 500. Now it is maybe 5,000 also in some accounts. Minimum balance, balance checking. That means the constraints have to be modifiable or constraints can be added or deleted or columns also, not only constraints. Columns can be added, deleted, modified to the structure of the database table by using the command alter table command. So alter table is used to, to modify or to add or to delete the structure, please remember, it's not data. It's the structure of the data, table, columns, as well as the constraints. So alter table, table name, add, modify, drop, column name, if it is a column, or add, modify, drop, constraint, constraint. For example, we are giving, we are adding a new column, Please remember, column was added means already existing data is there, no? Some rows are there. For that, for those set of rows, this column will be having null values. You have to update by using some other techniques. So, alter table customer details, add contact phone number. So, I added after creation of the table, a new attribute was can be added. Or, I, am, I would like to modify the Contact phone number, previously it is character 10, it is not sufficient. I may be using now 12 character. I can modify. Please observe here. What we are doing? The size of the initially added a new column. Added column size is increased. Here drop means we are deleting that column. Only column only we are deleting. Attribute only we are deleting. Automatically, contents of the attribute are going to be erased. Add drop not a problematic issue for us. But remember here, modify. When we are using this modify, only certain modifications are going to be supported by Oracle or SQL. When a column size is there, increasing the size, no problem. If you are decreasing the size, then automatically, whatever the data was there previously, if the it is more than the decreased size of the column, then automatically what happens? The respective data is going to be truncated. So the data is going to be not proper, it will be lost. So that's why always remember when we are decreasing the size, we have to think once twice. Similarly, type also, data type. Data types are also possible but provided it is compatible. You cannot change a, a character type data into numeric. You can change provided those characters are only numbers. But you can change a numeric data into character because each number is considered as a numeric character. Like that some constraints are there. We are not going in depth, but according to those constraints only these modifications are possible. Similarly, by using this alter table command, we can, as I discussed, we can add and delete the constraints. For example, add and draw primary key. Right? I can use the add constraint, a primary key PKE1 to account number. If I forgot to 
specify account number as a primary key or in my table i don't have any customer details table i don't have any primary key i can use this table syntax you observe add constraint is reserved this is the p k1 is a name of the key and primary key is also a reserved word as a key at key name within parenthesis it may be a simple or it may be a composite also depending upon our need actually alter table customer details and i am adding a composite account number customer id combination so this is a simple primary key this is a composite primary key for example at the time of creation of table if you didn't give the primary key you can add by using this alter table table name add constraint concept you can add primary key you can add foreign key or you can add any check constraint etc any constraint can be added similarly you can drop also you please observe now alter table customer detail drop primary key is enough because how many primary keys will be there in our table only one so drop primary key it's enough only one primary key no for the remaining keys we don't know actually that we will have to consider or you can use alter table table name drop constraint pke1 you observe what is pke1 name at the time of discussing the name of the key i told you we will discuss in the drop so if you provide this name to a constraint name then while dropping it is very easy to us we can drop the respective name without constraint the i may drop for example alter table customer details drop constraint not null how many not nulls are there for me many not nulls are there right so i have a not null as n null 1 n null 2 n null 3 etc no i may i would like to drop the not null for first one that is id so that is the purpose of the key generally we will consider along with the definition of the constraints constraint name is provided so that if you would like to drop you can drop the constraint and that name enough automatically it will be dropped similarly when we are doing these things add drop primary key add drop foreign key similarly you can do foreign key can be dropped alter the table by using the transaction drop constraint foreign key f key 1 so that is the purpose of giving a key name similarly i can add a foreign key you please observe alter table customer transaction add constraint f key 1 i am adding a foreign key 1 as a foreign key to which account number is a foreign key referring this customer details account number customer transaction is my current table customer details in which already account number was a primary key same account number is a foreign key in current table actually that is the relationship we will use the drop table you can delete the table entire thing drop table deletes the entire table along with the data structure also get deleted it cannot be recovered back so that's why drop table means it will be de deleted from our data structure also that means it will be get deleted our catalog also so drop table unique table means that respective table is deleted truncate truncate command is used to delete all rows of the table but not the structure remember table structure remains that is attribute names will be there structure will be there constraints will be there only content of the data content means rows are going to be deleted syntax is truncate table table name So, what is difference between drop table and truncate table? Drop table deletes the table along with the structure which cannot be recovered. Truncate table deletes only the rows. The structure will be there if any commit and save point are there. By using that, you can get recovered. And also, we can use some indexing also created. Indexing, as we discussed earlier in indexing, multi-level indexing, single-level indexing are allowed in our SQL also. other than this unique key foreign key depending upon our need we can index upon a particular attribute 
one attribute or a combination of attributes. So create index unique index name on table on which column you would like to use and according to index the data will be arranged in the ascending or descending order. So using single column create unique index customer index on customer details of customer ID. Customer details is our table name. So multi-column means customer ID, account number. If customer ID is equal, then only account number is going to be considered. Similarly, we can use the drop command once created. It need not be stored permanently. Once your work is finished, you can drop the indices because index, indices are occupying more space. So that's why we can drop the table and using our index, drop index, account number, etc. Index is having advantages to speed up the execution of the SQL statement, specifically search process actually. Conditions are satisfied, referred based upon the indexing attribute to indexing columns, then accessibility is going to be very, very fast. And it is also appropriate when retrieving the data from tables very frequently on the same at column names, then indexing is better. Disadvantages already we discussed in our theoretical concepts also. It consumes additional disk space. An index file is created with index value as well as the address of the respective tuple. So additional overhead will be there on DML statements. So these are the some of the data definition language statements which are used to, to implement our database to create our database or other objects that is table, schema, etc. and modify the structure of the database objects by using this TDL commands. And also constraints can be properly imposed and modifiable and deleted also. Thank you all. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.